get free clothes. Yeah. Free guys. Yeah. And um, just money thrown at you. Yeah. And you just sit there and smile. I wish. That sounds sexy. Oh, that would be beautiful. That sounds real sexy. That's the life right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not ours. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I think there's a misconception where people think that modeling is just about looking beautiful or having a certain look that people like, but that's not the reality of things. I would hear comments like, oh, you models, you guys have it so easy. All you have to do is stand there and look pretty. No, it's really not. There's a lot of work and sacrifices that go into this job, just like any other job, honestly. To be in this industry, you have to be very self-aware, have street smarts, book smarts, know how to run a business because you're a brand. You have to be your business manager, you have to be your own PR, you have to be your therapist, you have to be your mom and your dad. You have to be your own life coach. It's draining, it's emotionally, physically, mentally, it's, it's, it's for your well-being, it's draining. And that's like the side that people don't get to see, you know, they only get to see the end result and the glamorous bit of it. Now in today's day and age, there's no time off from being a model. You're a model 24-7. People see you 24-7. Even if you go to a bodega, Shorty Note follows you on Instagram. Well, how come you don't look as good as you do in your pictures? People expect you to be perfect 24-7. Working in an environment that's all about like beauty and how you look, obviously it shapes you a little bit. I always thought like, oh, if I would be a size two, I would finally be happy because it's what we see all the time. My whole life, I felt pressured to be a size that I've never been. It's not like I'm comparing to a person that I used to be, which is also painful for a lot of people, to this fantasy idea that suddenly if I was thinner, my experiences would be better, my life would be better, my relationships might be better. I don't think that that voice is so loud today. Thankfully, but for, for most of my life, those voices were very, very, very loud. And unfortunately, those voices are loud because the experiences as a girl over a size 10 who also happens to be brown and strange or whatever, it's affirmed in life in that like, yeah, like your life is a little bit better if you are those things. <laughs> I think we're all just brainwashed by Hollywood and like all the gossip magazines. I mean, it's hard to to get out of it. There's so many labels in our culture, like plus size and straight size. And I just don't think it's necessary because you walk outside every day and there's so many people and you're not labeling them in your head. I think it can be hard in the industry in that it's just like, straight size, plus size, da da da. The body positive movement, for instance, was designated for um, marginalized bodies to feel seen and validated. Um, and that movement has been co-opted by non-marginalized bodies to also feel seen, but those bodies are seen. It's not for a size six girl to be like, show her roles and be like, I'm body positive too, no offense. In New York, it's like, if you're skinny, like here, here I'm Beyonce, right? My no chest having skinny, lanky body. As soon as I'm in Nigeria, they oh. literally are like, ah, are you okay? Do you want foods? Do you want some food? Come, 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 Where's come. Where's your nyash? <laughs> and I'm ready for marriage. Where's your nyash? So beauty, uh, I think beauty for me is it's internal. It's what you omit to the world uh, subconsciously and non-verbally. Uh, it's not about the physical to me. Uh, beleza para mim significa o que está dentro da gente. É muito mais do que a aparência, do que está por fora. É as suas crenças, o que você acredita, as coisas pelas quais você luta, o que está dentro do seu coração e o que você é de verdade. Para mim, a beleza vem muito mais de dentro do que de fora, porque o que está por fora passa, mas o que está dentro vai permanecer com você sempre. Para mim, beauty means your sense of self. Because, I mean, people have called me ugly. When I go to the airport, right, my alias is my little brother. So I purposely dress like a boy. Some people will think I'm a man. The next person will be like, oh my God, you're gorgeous. Yeah, either I look like a little boy from the depths of Harlem, or a little posh black woman. Either people think I'm ugly or I'm cute, so it's like, whatever I think is beautiful. Depends on where you are. I didn't have access to magazines or TV. 
uh, for the first almost eight years of my life before I moved to Australia. And even when I did go to Australia, I didn't see a representation of myself. I did not. You start questioning yourself. You know, like, why? And then it, that questioning then turns into insecurities and you start to think, oh, am I not beautiful enough? Is that why there's no black girls in the magazine? Oh, I don't see little black girls like myself on the TV. Yeah, it's not a nice feeling. Growing up, um, I'm 26 now, so when I was reading magazines, there were only like the same kind of girls, like white, blonde, tall, skinny. Um, I was like the opposite, so I'm like, no, so not like no representation at all, actually. I thought that was the norm, but obviously now that it changed and now that I know that it can be different, I'm like, oh, wow, this should have happened like way before, like way before, yeah. I looked up to the woman, the strong woman around me, and that made me feel like I had a strong foundation and I didn't really look into the media for a representation. Yeah, it's so important to be for people to be represented. I'm very lucky in the way that, you know, I'm a white woman, so I literally have grown up seeing people like me all the time. And it's really important for, you know, people like growing up or just people in their day-to-day -day life to see someone that looks like them and say, that's normal. There's someone out there like me, or there's, you know, this is being celebrated, this is beautiful, this is, you know. I think it's so important for people to see and be recognized. That is what makes you feel like you can accomplish just because someone that you saw yourself in accomplished what you were interested in. The first time I felt represented was when Halima Allen walked to the Yeezy show and that is, I feel like the most important um, part in my life where I felt like I can actually pursue modeling and um, cause but before that I was just, it was lingering around in my head whether I should just pursue it or not. But when I did see Halima, it made me feel that just because she was doing it, I can do it too. We're here now. Uh, you know, my little sisters, for example, they're able to open up a magazine and see me and they automatically see themselves. They can turn on the TV and see another black model and they can see themselves and I'm, I'm grateful for that. My little sister, she's five years old and she was watching me on YouTube and she said she wants to walk the runway and things like that because she saw me wearing those clothes and she saw herself in me, so. And like, I think the fashion industry has impacted your mental health. Um, I do.